If you're like me, we spend a lot of time and money on our 3D printers and on our filament. And there's nothing worse than it being 3 o'clock in the morning and not having the right tool for the right job. So stick with me and I'm going to go over 10 tools that I use to keep my printers alive and my projects going. Number one on my list of tools is a hobby torch or a creme brulee torch, whatever you want to call it. This particular one is a Dremel Model 2200 and uh, I think it retails for about $54.11 on Amazon. I'll have the links in the description below. But these come in handy for cleaning up prints. So anytime we use glue or hairspray or anything like that on a build plate, it leaves a little bit of residue on the bottom of the print. And not many people know that you can reach up and you can hit this with a torch and get rid of that residue. It cleans up the print, turns it right back to that natural color, removing the little white, white little bit that's left over. Also, anytime that you bend filament or break filament, you know that little white, uh, like stress color that's left on the print? Well, the hobby torch, just a quick little glance of the heat uh, removes that. Um, how about stringing, hairs that are left on your print? A hobby torch removes those completely, and I think it does a far better job than using a uh, heat gun or a hair dryer. Matter of fact, if you're using a different model and you happen to find a less expensive one, definitely drop that in the comments below. One of the primary reasons to use a hobby torch over something like a traditional cigarette lighter, you need a torch that has a fine flame or a fine point, and you also need it to be at a high enough temperature. Things like cigarette lighters will leave a black residue if you try and clean up prints and remove hairs and strings. Number two on my list is a bottle for isopropyl alcohol. So as you can imagine, 3D printing, we all use isopropyl alcohol, and there's lots of different ways to do it. I picked up a couple of bottles from Amazon. These are just amber-colored bottles. They're glass, and I'll have the link in the description below as well. Um, but I find that these are pretty handy. They're, they're pretty good size. They're nice and solid. And I mean, like any traditional spray bottle that you're going to have, uh, you have a stream or a mist. We use these pretty regularly. We have a couple of these and it is constantly being moved around between different studios and different rooms with the kids printing and me printing and cleaning up everything. But definitely this is what I use. I'm sure there's less expensive bottles out there that are plastic, um, but I just uh, prefer these. You'll end up going through quite a bit of isopropyl alcohol when you're cleaning up different build plates and surfaces. And so it's just awful handy to have a nice large amount of it uh, to do that cleaning. Number three on the list is perfectly paired with the isopropyl alcohol, and that is some microfiber cloths. Now, I used to use paper towels, and that was just something that we just used up here, the blue paper towel shop towels, um, but I kind of felt it was wasteful, and it's quite expensive. Cleaning build plates is something that we do quite regularly, right? And I would just go through roll after roll after roll of five, six, seven, and eight dollar blue shop towels. I believe you can pick up a 50 pack of these for like $12.99, and I'll have the link in the description below. But these are super awesome. I normally hit the bill plate with a bunch of isopropyl alcohol and I scrub all of the residue off from any glue stick or any other type of uh, interface layer that we have on there. Clean it nice. Take that one, throw that in the laundry, take out a fresh one, give it a nice last cleaning. And then that's the one that I use to just kind of clean everything in between. And uh, But I'll tell you what, 50 of them lasts a really long time. They're not very expensive. And of course, they're reusable. You just wash them. So definite buy Number four on the list is a deburring tool. This thing is a lifesaver. It is a must-have. If you don't have one, you need to go to the description and click on that link. These are invaluable. I have the red one in the description. You'll see some B-roll of it here in a moment. Deburring tools are used to clean up the edges of your prints. So if you use a brim on any one of your prints, and you know you peel that brim off and it's, it leaves that little bit of sharp edge, well, the deburring tool reaches up and you just grab it and you can slide that down that edge all the way around and clean up that edge beautifully. In addition to that, if you have elephant's foot, right, which is when you squish down your first layer a little bit too much and the, and the, the bottom edge of the print is a little bit uh, protruding or extending, that's exactly what this for. This cleans it up. So you can clean up interior, you can clean up exterior surfaces. And, uh, but like I said, this is an invaluable tool that will save you so much time. So go get one. All right, number five is a bit controversial. I know, right? Glue stick. Hold on, don't hate me. I know that a lot of people use glue stick, and I know that a lot of people don't use glue stick. I know that people use hairspray. I know that people are purists and don't use anything. Um, but I'm more concerned about just simply printing and having it work and not wasting time trying to fine-tune a Z offset, uh, you know, infinitely. I want to just print. And uh, I, I don't care if people use glue stick. I don't really care if people use hairspray. I don't care if people use anything. This is what I use. So what I use when uh, on a glass surface, on a PEI surface, it really doesn't matter, or even build tag, like in the Raised 3D machines behind me, I use purple glue stick, so a PVA glue. Now, Amazon has these for sale, and I'll have a link in the description below, but they sell a 60 count, get it? 60 of these 
right here for $13.57. That is insane. Great price. It will last you forever. And uh, essentially what a purple glue stick does is it creates an interface between the build surface and your print so that while it's printing and it's hot, it's going to help hold the print down. But when your print cools, it's going to help the print release. In fact, we just cleaned the build plate inside the X1 Carbon today. And I think the last time we'd applied that glue was had to have been maybe two, three, four weeks ago. And you can get a lot of prints off of one application of glue stick. And then once you kind of start to notice that you're back to the print not quite sticking the way you want it to, you simply isopropyl alcohol, microfiber cloth, and clean it incredibly well, reapply a nice thin layer just once back and forth across the entire build plate, let it sit for about 60 seconds, throw it in the printer, print, and you will have perfect adhesion every single time definite buy they like you should have this especially at three o'clock in the morning when you're having adhesion problems yes it's not the time to not have it number six on the list is an eight piece plier set that i picked up from amazon uh, probably about two years ago or so it's about 32 dollars for this set i know there's lesser expensive ones out there you can probably go to harbor freight but this particular set ended up being pretty good quality and i use it a lot matter of fact there's enough of them that you find a couple of them in each studio and kind of laying around. There's smooth jaw, there's jaws with teeth, uh, needle nose, there's hooked, there's all sorts of stuff. And they really come in handy when we're removing supports or when we're working on printers and machines and we need to hold parts while we're tightening something. So uh, this is something that I would highly recommend that every single person, whether or not you use the one that's in the Amazon link below in, in the description, or if you go find your own set, but super handy and a definite tool, you need to have a good set of pliers. Okay, number seven is interesting. This is a set of files. I think it's about a 16 or 17 piece set of files, and it's about $23 or so on Amazon. Like I said, for everything, I'll have a link in the description below. I use these files a lot. They're full-size files. It's a set of metal files. I use these for cleaning up the bottom of helmets, uh, for finishing helmets, for taking off the Bondo. I use it for smoothing. There's all sorts of little tiny files, flat, rounded, rat tail, everything in this set. And I think it's a pretty good price. It comes in a nice little zip carrying case, but you should definitely have a set of files. I don't like sanding. And I find that files do, well, they take off a lot more material than uh, a sanding does. But you can still get in there with the finesse and it doesn't require as much elbow grease and as much pressure and files just do a fantastic job. So I prefer files over sandpaper in many instances and circumstances, but it's a definite to have in your kit that you'll be able to clean up prints, remove sharp edges, take away massive amounts of filament. And here's another trick. You can even heat the files up and you can use the files to poke holes inside uh, prints and models and things like that to kind of deform and even change the way that the print is after it's printed. So a definite buy, go get some files, have some. Number eight is one that I get asked a lot about, and that is how do I lubricate the 3D printers when we're maintaining them? And super lube is what we use. And this was recommended to us uh, when we got into 3D printing by Raise 3 d I called them up on the phone and said, what do you guys use uh, on these machines? And they said, Super lube, silicon grease. So go get it, and that's what uh, that's what we use. This is a three ounce bottle, and I've had this for a couple of years. Um, I'd have to say it's probably not even half empty, maybe about half half empty or so. But this will last a lifetime, and uh, it's what we use on anything from the Prusa Minis to the Ray 3D machines to well the Borons, everything. So definitely, super lube should be on your list, and you should have that. So anytime you're maintaining printers, cleaning stuff up. Whenever there's a little bit of downtime, you can just reach over there, throw a little super lube on those uh, on those rods and uh, and screws, and uh, keep everything nice and smooth. Number nine on the list is needles for cleaning nozzles. Now you might not think that this is important, but it is. There's a link in the description below for a nozzle cleaning kit, and uh, for about twelve ninety nine, you get a little set of tweezers and you get a bunch of nozzle needles. This is a must have. There's going to be a time when you get a clog or you're going to have to use a needle to clean it out. Whether you go in from the bottom or you go in from the top, it doesn't really matter, but a needle is what's going to be uh, needed to clean it out. So I highly recommend having needles available. Um, another thing is, like I said, you can heat those needles up um, and you can feed them up through the tip of that nozzle and you can get plastic flowing. We use them a lot here to even find pass-through extruders, right? So we slip it down to find out if there's any obstructions. But definitely having nozzle needles is a must that everyone should have. In fact, 
Um, a lot of 3D printers even come with them, not all of them. But the ones that do, I always steal the needles out and just throw them into into the little kit that I picked up a couple years ago. So I always have a bunch of new, fresh uh, needles. So definitely, that should be in everyone's kit. Now, last on my list, number 10, is hex drivers. I absolutely hate Allen keys. Hate them. I hate to use them. Um, I wish I could throw them away. We have dozens and dozens, probably maybe even over 100 or 100 plus here. Um, I would rather use a driver. And so this is three. I, I actually lost the other one. I don't know where it's at. Um, but this is a set of hex drivers for about $16.50. There's four of them. Uh, it comes in a 1.5, 2, 2.5, and 3 millimeter sizes right here. I really recommend having these over Allen keys any day. This is my most common, 2.5. I love that they're color-coded. In fact, if you're watching my content, whether we're live or recorded, you will see uh, this blue one make an appearance in almost every single one of them. But I prefer these way more than I do Allen keys, and that should definitely be on your list of things to keep your printers alive. If you have tools that you suggest that we should have in our kits, definitely leave those in the comments below. I'd like to know what you have that you think is a critical tool in your 3D printing arsenal. And I want to say thank you to all of you for making it this far in the video. And I want to give a very special shout out to our YouTube members. You are what make this content possible. If you'd like your name included in every single one of our videos, there's a little join button down below. Click that. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much, JD Davis, Jesse West, Four Pipes, David Quashnik, Waste in Time, VPS Data, Captain Jerbear91, Sir Will 3D, Joel Finn, Brandon0109, Cam Nicholas, Luppy Leptonium, Desenzia, Patrick W3D, Rip Artist, Vredog Knight, Cetral, Your Buddy Denek, Buddha3D, and Jedi Spidey. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one.